You'll notice that Father John is not here today. Presbyterian delivered baby Theodora at 3 o'clock on Saturday morning. Mother and baby are doing quite well. And they're all at home resting. So we have a very light crew today. It's a very short passage, only eight verses. But St. John Chrysostom and other fathers analyze this and, and pull out very rich meaning for application for ourselves. They point out that in just 10 or 12 verses ahead of this one, we have the Lord and the disciples crossing the Sea of Galilee. A storm comes up. They have to wake him up, and he calms the waters. Then they go and have the incident with the Gadarene swine, where he cast the demons out of the possessed man. And now we have the paralytic and the forgiveness of sins. They say that this shows his power over nature, forces of nature, power over the demons, power over sin, and illness. They also point out that Capernaum had become his new base of operations since he was rejected in Nazareth. So it says he comes to his home city. And then they go into the faith. This, this passage does not mention the four the par paralytic carried by four, but in the other two synoptic gospels, Mark and Luke, this is that passage where they go on, they can't get in because of the crowd, they go on the roof, move the tiles, and lower him down. And they analyze the faith. The one thing of the four. And Jesus seeing their faith, plural. So the exegesis starts with the faith of the four young men who carried their friend, the paralytic. And we see faith in action, just like the epistle of James, I show faith through my works. Here we have faith in action. And we see creativity. Not a word we see in scripture, but it's actually active in the Christian life, creativity. We put ourselves in the shoes of those four Men, how can we get there? How can we get close? Because we have to fight our way to Christ through every belief system, non belief system, every practice, every distraction, every influence to get in Christ's presence. So the four of them get on the roof, move the terracotta roof tiles, fine robes, and move them down. And then we see the Lord addressing the paralytic. Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. They point out that there are three types of healings that the Lord does. There are those that he sees the faith, perceives the faith of the one he's about to heal. See this many times. The, the man at the sheep school. He perceived he had faith to be healed. We see the faith of those who petition for someone. The centurion with his servant. Jairus with his daughter. It wasn't faith the, of, the, of the subject. It was faith of the petitioner. And then we see examples where there's no particular faith at all. The raising of the son of the widow of Nain. The man was dead. There's no faith there. His mother was wailing, and the people didn't seem to know. He did it of his own mercy. The man born blind, where there's a lengthy explanation. He had done it for the glory of God, strictly. Here we have a combination of the faith of the four young men and the subject, the paralytic himself. And here we see the faith that we live. The word son is a term of endearment, of closeness. 
when he raised the son of the widow of Nain, he said, young man. It wasn't, it, it was a more distant approach. We are used to, in modern America, being very casual. We, we address people by their first name. Describe someone as a friend who is really just an acquaintance. In more formal societies, titles are used. Mr., Mrs., Doctor, Professor, <coughs> Miss. And you only address by first name or a term of endearment as your son when something special has happened. It's almost an initiation to be able to address someone by their first name. Be of good cheer, joy, be joyful. Your sins are forgiven you. In the forgiveness of sins comes the closeness with Christ. That's what's being referred to here. Because they worked on the, the, the church fathers worked on the aspect of faith in this passage, I pulled out this book, which I've read three times, Remember Thy First Love, Three Stages of the Spiritual Life in the Theology of Elder Saproni of Essex. It's got a 20-page chapter on faith. That it's interesting to live the Orthodox life and go through what we go through. But it's so internal and external with the worship and the sacraments. But the changes that take place within us, if someone were to ask us what is happening, it's frankly beyond description. We can mention the effects. The elder starts this chapter, which begins the book, with uh, on faith, and he starts with the faith of Abraham. I could read half the book to you, but we'd be here all day and you'd, I'd lose your attention. So I'm just trying to get the most succinct passages. No one, however, who has given himself over to God in a spirit of faith will remain untested. Each person will be tested differently, sometimes severely. Some may be threatened by death itself. But if at that moment of testing, we stand firm in our faith in Christ, render glory and thanksgiving to him. Our faith, like that of Abraham, will then be stronger than death. For that faith not only overcomes the world, but death itself. We are gradually made ready to take even that dreadful leap of faith, which conquers death. Charismatic faith such as Abraham's takes us from the shore of created things to the shore of the uncreated, bridging the gulf between God and man. And when man shows such faith, he will surely arrive at the haven of love, for God is love. His temporal life will be united to the immortal, and eternal life of God. And this is the greatest miracle of man's existence. God deems human life worthy of union with his own divine life, with his own being, through grace. The God-man bridges and unites earth and heaven. In our orthodox life, we join in that process. That's what we're doing here. And that union unites us with the love of Christ. That which heals and soothes our souls. And just like the men opening up the roof, faith leads to action. Action grows faith. And we engage in this cycle. I've spent time at a parish of ours in Seattle called the Protection of the Mother of God. In Russian, it's called Pokrov. Father Saracen Gascoigne, a good friend of mine. 
And three quarters of his congregation are ethnic Slavs, Russians, Ukrainians, Belarus, Georgia, from those countries. It's a different experience being around them. Their faith is, has a solidity to it that converts take years to acquire. And he described to me in the confessional life, converts have questions, frustrations, doubts that the priest has to guide them through. With these hereditary, those of hereditary faith, multi-generational faith, their faith is solid. There's other influences and in human passions, just a, a part of human nature that the priest has to guide them through. But I also spent time at a parish in Butte, Montana. And I was just recently there last month. And I spent time around his new people. Catechumens, new Orthodox. But my experience was that when a conversation started, it started with the unspoken recognition that we both had come from the same background. Having to fight our way through the other Christian confessions and beyond and what they had experienced there and the fact that we were here now. There's a marketing slogan, he's tried the rest, now try the best. Or, you've tried the rest, now you've found the best. It's that, it's that kind of experience, the same that we have here. So when someone becomes Orthodox, it grabs their heart, and they grab it. The faith, the, the experience of having Christ sealed within us, and that we don't want to ever be part of it. Elder Saproni also talks about charismatic despair and dynamic faith. Charismatic despair, the trials in life that we push ourselves through to hold on to that faith, to grow the faith, and operate in the faith. And that's what I believe we are doing here. What this passage is illustrating to us. He actually, he forgives the sins, but to illustrate it and to cement it, he heals the young man. And he tells him, take up thy bed and go to thine house. The man has to then take action. He illustrates the gospel through the action of his life. And he lives the gospel through the action of his life. Amen.